Hey, what's going on, everybody? Matt Holmes here with TACWADS.com coming to you with uh, another interview, but this is an exclusive one just for our TACWADS website. Um, I'm excited. Uh, I've been checking out a lot of uh, Derek's videos and the videos they got going on, you know, the Pew Professional, all that stuff on YouTube. Everybody's loving it. So I reached out to Derek uh, and asked him if he would be a guest to kind of share some of his story. I know it'd be motivational for a lot of guys out there, whether active duty veterans or a lot of guys that are home and still recovering from injuries and things like that. So uh, I'm happy to welcome Derek Wida. And again, thank you for taking the time, Derek. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, perfect. So uh, as we were talking before the call, um, I'll kind of let you get into as much as your background of where you started leading up to where you are now with everything. Okay, sure. It's, uh, it's hard to fit six or seven years. I'll try to keep it short. I was in the 82nd Airborne Division, and then we did a few tours. Um, in uh, 2007, I got shot on a house raid, and I ended up getting shot side to side through the knee. Um, uh, and then I was at Walter Reed for about seven months there. And, uh, they, they gave me this really grim prognosis. They, they said my leg had been, um, it, it had been fused essentially. And so I'd walk around with kind of a peg leg and they, they gave me a prognosis of best case scenario. I would walk without a cane, you know, sort of walk unassisted someday. And I said, well, that's, that's not good enough for me. You know, I, I, um, I still had dreams of, of doing cooler things in the army. I kind of wasn't done yet. So I had asked them way back then to, uh, to just cut my leg off and let me go on with my career, you know, and, and, and now, you know, there's guys in Afghanistan and guys still jumping with uh, prosthetic limbs and stuff like that. But the, uh, the doctors weren't really trained. They're, they're more about the limb salvage. So they were pretty, um, I had to fight them for four years, actually, to, uh, it took four years and they finally cut my leg off. And those, those four years were the pretty typical, um, I had a hard time adjusting to, to my new life. Mostly for me, it was because, um, um, I didn't want, I didn't know what else to do. Like being in the army was all I wanted to do with my life. And I, and I kind of lost all sense of purpose here. But then in 2011, surprisingly the VA, I finally agreed or they agreed to cut my leg off. Um, so, <laughs> you know, and ever since then, so that was December, 2011, ever since then, um, you know, just being active again and, and being more mobile and more in control of my life. You know, my mood has been a lot better and I'm able to focus on, on new and different things. And so now what I'm doing is I'm starting a gym here in Minnesota that's going to be fully vet operated. And I actually got picked up by, uh, I was on the news here and I actually got picked up by a, uh, a big name gym and we're, we've partnered up and we're kind of creating this really cool veteran operated gym and we're building this social club inside where the goal is to once a month or so um have sort of a muster where we bring veterans in and then people like the cbso drug dependency counselors reps from different vet organizations um try to get them information on resources and benefits that's not a va setting you know <laughs> We don't enjoy that too much. And then I also started a nonprofit that'll pay for veterans memberships, training, and then sponsoring them to compete or participate in any kind of events that they want. Like if they want to do a triathlon, Tough Mudder, uh, whatever, if they want to climb a mountain, I don't, you know, anything to keep them active. It's called the next objective. And that's the, uh, that's the kind of the mission is to keep guys focused on what's in front of them instead of kind of thinking about, past a little too much yeah, and uh that's pretty awesome i like that that's one thing that i saw on your facebook recently when i kind of reached out to you because i was thinking i saw the videos this and that and, you know when i reached out to you it's it's kind of the vision i have of with the tech well stuff is similar to that which is why you know i reached out i was like oh you know you're doing the gym i'm planning to open up a gym on the west coast side and do very much a similar thing of a place for veterans to go that they have somewhere, you know, as you know, being in the gym is one of the best antidepressants or make you want to, you still have that edge to improve and push yourself where these guys, they lose all of that. And again, around the same kind of people, it's not the VA, it's not the bullshit that's out there. It's something 
like by veterans for veterans. Yeah, yeah. That it, you know, I, I sort of skipped a little bit of a, the story. What played probably the most important role in my sort of recovery and transition is uh, my buddy who I was in the army with actually started a Tough Mudder team way back, like Tough Mudder's first year. We hadn't heard about it or anything, and uh, he just sort of blasted it out there on Facebook. Anybody that wants to join, and like I had lost contact with all my um, my army friends just because I was kind of sitting here alone in Minnesota and I was in, wasn't doing anything admirable. So I wasn't too social or anything, but yeah. on a whim, I joined this team and then having that as, you know, this short term goal and training for that. And then I went out to Colorado and I, I linked up with three or four of the guys that I was in the army with and just, you know, having, getting back in the gym on, with, with a mission and then reconnecting with, with not just army buddies, but other veterans, you know, it, it played a huge role in my recovery. And so that's what I'm, I'm trying to create that community here, you know, where, you know, everybody, you know, we feel comfortable around other veterans and everybody supports each other, looks out for one another and just fucking has fun together, you know? So, yeah. yeah. And I think that's, that's really awesome. And, and doing something like that, like I saw on you, you know, with some of the stuff I want to do, as you know, there's a huge gap, between civilians and veterans or even active duty service there's like a huge disconnect now and doing things like that i think will really help because being a gym there's obviously going to be you know i'm sure you're going to have regular people you know civilians in there too not just only veterans where you're going to be like nope sorry you can't come in so it helps other people i think it brings more awareness to kind of what's going on because people really don't know the news gives bullshit. People don't understand, you know, the whole PTSD or anything like that. Nobody really knows unless they're part of that. So I think that really helps bridge that gap. And it's going to, it's only just going to help the community more and bring more people out to want to help, to want to sponsor, to want to, you know, reach out to you, reach out to everybody else, you know, me that's doing stuff like this. So I think it's really awesome. Yeah, exactly. And I, you know, I thought about that too, is I follow like, dysfunctional veteran there's a there's a really awkward community of veterans that think people hate them or don't care about them or something so yeah bridging that societal gap where you know um veterans and civilians alongside each other they can get us the vets can get a sense that people do care maybe sometimes they just don't know how to show love and support and so and or they don't personally even know any veterans or active duty um yeah people so yeah bridging that gap is it could be could be potentially um really big in someone's life you know so exactly yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's going to be something huge because you know as, as you and i both know there's only so much the government and the va and all this other shit can really do which isn't a whole lot and i think that's where we kind of all need like you're saying look out for each other step up and then civilians i think need to and i think they they're out there there's plenty that want to but they just they don't know where to go because right. there's nothing really out there. But when they start seeing it, they'll be like, oh, I want to be part of that. I want to volunteer my time. Or, you know, for lack of a better term of like a, you know, there's AA sponsors. I think there's going to be civilians that would be really good. Yeah, they're not a veteran. But I think there'll be a good support system also outside for non-veterans as well, you know, looking out for each other. Sure. <laughs> awesome. Um I kind of wanted to touch back on some of the stuff where you said when you first kind of were at Walter Reed and all this and, you know, they gave you the diagnosis before they finally gave you what you wanted. What, looking back on it now, what's some things that you've learned and advice that you could give to people that are possibly might not know that they're going to be in that situation, but especially guys that are in that situation now that are working through it. Don't do it alone. You know, um, I think that, that was the biggest, that was the dumbest thing I did was just sort of shut myself out and, and try to go out alone. You know, I was real angry and depressed and I was, all I was doing was drinking and, and getting into fights. So, and it's because I was just kind of here on my own. But then once, you know, two, you know, for three years or something. And then when I finally reconnected with, you know, I, one buddy and then another buddy. And then now I'm, you know, reconnect with about everybody I served with, plus all these people I haven't even met, you know, and it's just, and now I feel like I'm part of that community again, 
where after my injury, the army, you know, they, they sent me back home to, to Minnesota here where I didn't, there was nobody and nobody that I had served with. And so I was just kind of on my own. So, I mean, I would definitely stay, stay connected with the guys you served with, especially, or then there's all sorts of veteran groups here on Facebook, things like that, you know, just stay, stay a part of the community. Yeah. And that would be, that's the most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, again, you know, plays back to a lot of the stuff that, you know, you're trying to do and I'm trying to do is just build it more and more. And I think there's also how we were saying with the civilian community, they kind of don't really know where. And I think there is that also a disconnect as well with veterans and too, or guys that are going through that. Cause again, like government, there's really not a whole lot out there that they're doing. And like you said, they kind of just, will alienate themselves because they don't know where, you know, they don't know, they might want to reach out and get that help, but they're like, I don't know where. And then they get in a situation where there's nobody around and they think, Oh, well there's nothing in my immediate area. So I'm just going to, like you said, just do it alone, which is what you don't want to do. Right. Yeah. Cause then, then to kill time, just end up drinking all day. And, and you know, that, that just makes things worse. And, you know, I don't know. A lot of the a lot of the guys are on all sorts of pills from the VA and things like that, mixing it with drink. It's just a you just gotta like my my uh, my message is you know stay connected, stay active, drink a little less whiskey until you're in the clear, you know. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, and that's what's great about Facebook. How you mentioned that there's so many groups. I keep seeing new ones pop up all the time. You know, there's ones that are growing huge now and every all the time i'm seeing new ones guys are like check this out or check this out and i'm seeing like like what, what is it like as soon as i turn around i see a new one that everyone's talking about there's another new one i'm like what well, you almost can't keep up with it so the internet is great in that aspect of if you maybe you go back home and you are in an area where there isn't anything you're still not alone there's people you can pick up a fucking phone call somebody there's plenty of people i've always told people and you know i know it everybody out there is like, if someone's in that position, there are people out there that's like, Hey, call. Right. Yeah. Just, uh, like a week ago, one of our buddies, he's kind of going through a tough time right now. And so, and, and there's pretty, once you've been through it, you recognize certain, uh, certain things people say or do. And then they, you know, it's a, it's an, it's an alarm. And so he, uh, you know, he, he asked everybody if he should, you know, he's, he's not, so he's going through a tough time. He said he's probably going to be deleting his Facebook. What does everybody think? It's like, no way, man. Like, this is, this is our only point of contact here. You know, like, if you get rid of your Facebook, then we really have no way to, you know, to, to help and support you or just keep track of you and make sure you're okay. You know, because uh, we've lost enough guys states. We've lost about as many guys stateside as we did overseas, you know, and it's just – it's uh it it hurts every time so no yeah staying connected yeah that's why i love facebook i told that guy don't you dare delete your facebook <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's like people knock the facebook this and that like yeah there are some situations where maybe somebody just shouldn't be on facebook but in this situation it's like it it's where technology makes a huge difference than it would have 10 15 years ago because it's so easy, like you're saying, to connect with all these people. And then something that you said, too, that I wanted to bring up that I don't think, again, civilians, because I still have, you know, I have civilians that watch all my stuff, my pages. They don't realize, you and I know, and people that are in the community, they don't, but civilians don't know how many people are lost stateside, like daily and weekly and a monthly basis. And because you don't see it on the news, nobody reports it, which is obviously a whole other topic on news and things like that. But it's, it's sad and it's, it pisses me off a lot of times that it's not because people don't know that. Like it, there, it's not just over there. Everyone complains about the war and the people like, oh, bring the troops home and this and that. It's like, what about the fucking ones that are home? Yeah. Like, what about them? Like, you want to look out for them too? And nobody, you know, I know part of it is, it's again, it's not being put out there. People don't know, but that also doesn't mean like, I think civilians shouldn't just be like, Oh, you know, like not really care about. And that's again, the whole bridging the gap and kind of molding and 
educating is kind of what we have to do is educate civilians out there to help bridge that gap on it. Yeah, and that's why I think, you know, what we're trying to do with the gyms is great because I went through the VA, the, I, I went through the, uh, what the VA will put you through, you know, like I was on some antidepressants and then I had to go to, uh, you know, see a psychologist. I did the 30 day, um, in hospital program thing. And that's just it's never when I, when I needed help, that's not what I, that's not what I needed or wanted. And I didn't know at the time, but what I, I just wanted to be back in the family, you know, and, and, and I sort of shut myself out. So yeah, there's a, and that's, I think that's a disconnect between services that are offered and what guys, uh, guys and girls need and want while they're trying to, uh, you know, reestablish a civilian life. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, the, the part where I say, you know, that there's what the VA and the government offers, which is, of course, it's better than fucking nothing. Yeah. But it's not what guys actually kind of really need. It's not filling the void. It's like, oh, you have this. Let's fucking put some Band-Aids on it. It's not, let's find out what that void is and let's help replace that in a civilian setting. Yeah. So that's okay. perfect. Um, so what are some of the other things you, you, you got going on? You know, I know people are all about the, the YouTube videos, this and that. Like, I, I still remember the uh, – the the never skipping the leg day one of the little bird which i was like this is awesome i was like this is like workout porn right here <laughs> that was that was all that was pretty that happened pretty randomly you know uh the i actually i actually just recently linked up with those guys jt um was uh attached to our unit in in 2007 so that's how i know him i contact he said you know, hey, come out, let's do some videos. So I think people, and people keep tagging me on Facebook in their Article 15 clothing shirts. I don't actually work with them. I just flew down there for a week to hang out and shoot some videos. But while I was down there, um, you know, talking to Matt, we have some ideas to um, possibly work together in the future a little bit. Um, yeah, those those guys are, that was a good time. I, my, tr my training and diet suffered miserably that week but uh we had a good time yeah. <laughs> yeah the videos i see you know like the the recent one too the the how do you know if you're a veteran one you know like they're they're all good yeah but i remember that i think the the little bird one was one of the first ones i saw and i'm like what is this you know and everyone's like you know it's always like oh skip leg day i'm like a short video let me see and i'm watching and then i was like oh <laughs> i was like i sent it to everybody i was like this is pretty badass <laughs> Yeah, it was good too because Matt was really upset all day because we had he uh, we had posted a, a like a gym selfie earlier in the day just saying hey what's up and everybody was trashing on his legs and it's funny because his legs aren't even small but he was getting he was getting real emotional about all the hate talk on the internet and so that was that video was just uh, kind of the rebuttal you know it's like hey make fun of me but. When's the last time you did pull-ups on a little bird, you know? Yeah, but that's when I saw it. I was like, pretty much your argument was invalid at that fucking point. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I was like that. She's, what are you, when are you going to do that? Like, who's done that? Pretty much nobody. Yeah, talk all the shit you want. Now, shut up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was, it was pretty sketchy, though. Honestly, we, we did it twice. The first time. I thought it wasn't, you know, the, we went out, did some pull-ups. I thought it wasn't cool enough because we weren't high enough. And so kind of we, we went and did it again, and then those, those kids are real thick. So I actually, on the second time, I started losing my grip a little bit. And so I had to re-grip, and we're, you know, a good couple stories up. So it was kind of – Oh, man. After the second one. As too. cool as it looked at, when it was over, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm good on that for the day you know <laughs> like, that's good that shot was fine We don't because <laughs> i was wondering that because you know it's cut it's cut off where it's like it sees you can't really see how far and i'm like right. are they just above the ground i was like i think they're probably a little bit higher than that though <laughs> yeah the second, we were we were like that's what i was saying the first time we weren't high enough to actually injure ourselves so it wasn't cool so we had to get high enough to where if we fell we'd be in some serious trouble and that's 
that's what makes it cool, you know. So yeah, it, was, it made it even even better if you know if something <laughs> happens and you have another video. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's cool. What's um, what's your kind of? How do you do a lot of your training then? Like, what what do you do with your training? Like, what kind of do you have to adjust or you know, kind of what what's your training like with the gym right now? Uh, I'm old school. I'm pretty. I'm pretty classical about my weightlifting, you know, and, and uh, as far as my training philosophy, I hate most of the stuff that I see in the gym. I work at, I, I work out at a big box gym here in, uh, in Minnesota and, and it's kind of all that trendy mm -hmm. um, new age fitness stuff, but I go in and, you know, my training depends on what my goals are. So over the last eight months or so, I just started, I learned how to squat and deadlift like some serious weight again. So now that I can do that, I just wanted to sort of bulk up and get some of the muscle that I lost over the, over the years. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, I go in there and I hit it heavy, just, just the classical movements, you know, a lot, lots of, you know, hit the bench, incline dumbbell presses, bent over rows, pull-ups all the time, squats, deadlifts, leg press, just, you know, basics. Yep, yep. And then if you know, I have I'm, I have to do the tough mutter again in a month. So if you know, I, I throw cardio in when I have to. Now I don't. It's uh, I just I just like lifting heavy weights. Yeah. You know. And, and, uh, <laughs> yep. But yeah. it bothers you know going into opening the gym. I was actually thinking about being a personal trainer at the gym here, but I just looked around and saw all the fluffy training philosophy you know the, yeah. just the, the training and the philosophies behind it and i was reading like the nasm personal training certification book and it referred to gyms in quotation marks you know and i said all right i'm done with this crap you know I can't. <laughs> so yeah. you know i just i uh i'm more i'm more about the mental toughness aspect you know lifting weights getting stronger faster any of that stuff is easy training your brain to um you know, overcome challenges is the hard part. Yeah. And that's what I'd be more focused on uh, teaching people. Yeah. And that's one thing that I like with, you know, being in, in the gym too, is that, well, what we would consider the training, not some of this other shit that you see there, there is that mental, you know, toughness when you're getting your ass kicked or you're about to get under some heavy weight or whatever. And you're like, holy shit, you know, like I'm coming down and I better make sure I come back up. <laughs> you know or or when you're doing all the different like some of the stuff that we have you know it's like the main lifts still do you know squat press bench deadlift and then certain conditioning things or a lot of high rep and you know there's all this different stuff but there's that that mental aspect and as you know everything whether it's overcoming what you did or being in the gym or within the military it's it all comes down to the mindset you know that you can't can't have it no matter what you do, if you don't have that mindset and that tough mindset to persevere through everything, it's not going to fucking matter what you do. Yep. And that, you know, that's, uh, uh, I think we understand a, a don't quit mentality a lot better than, um, a lot of the civilians around here. And, and yeah, once you unlock that part of your brain, that kind of says, there's nothing that I can't do because I'm, I'm dumb enough and I'm tough enough to give my best at everything. And that translates outside of the gym too, in their personal lives, you know, you yeah. know, relationships or work, things like that. None of it, everything's a little bit easier to handle because you're just stronger mentally, yeah. you know, but that, that can all be uh, learned and taught in the gym, which is, you know, something I enjoy. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's one reason why I love it. You know, it's for me, it's my, it, it's almost always brought up on any interview. I do the, the mental aspect of it and, you know, because a lot of people that get serious into it, whether they're power lifters or anything, it typically comes from a mental thing of them trying to come over and persevere over something. Like for me, I fell in love with it when I was younger, but then I had family issues, things like that growing up, and I fell out of it and turned fucking super hardcore into drugs, like hardcore, hardcore into drugs. And it got me out of it because it was like that it gave me that mental, like something else, like, yeah, I'm totally addicted to the gym now, which is way better, but <laughs> it, it gave me that mental toughness to kind of deal with shit, overcome, 
and push myself in a better, better way. And I know guys that did it with it, you know, whether they were overcoming something serious within their family or they were, you hear a lot of these guys that do great things. They were bullied a lot when they were kids. And so they went in cause they wanted to be tough, not just strong, but give them that mental confidence of I can really do this or I can do anything and nothing's going to stop. Most of the times those guys come in to be successful. Everything they do in life outside the gym. Cause like, as you said, it, it plays everywhere. You know, there's so much cross uh, correlation with gym and the regular life. Yeah. I mean, once you can, uh, if you can mentally put yourself under a couple hundred pounds, you know, a lot, like a lot of guys, a lot of guys fear the weight and they lose out on reps, things like that. So once you break that, open up that part of your brain that just becomes sort of fearless, that's what um, can, uh, you know, uh, just translate into different areas of your life and, and make some big improvements there. Yeah. Nice. And then that's where it's like seeing guys like you and, you know, I know it's more common now, but like, as you were saying, back in, back in the day, it was kind of unheard of to see some of these guys, whether they're in big army or some of these guys in special operations that are going back with only one leg and they're out there fucking kicking doors and shit like that. Like you got to have that mental toughness and it really proves like you can do anything you know as you say you know there's guys jumping still like they're they're just as badass as they were you know with two legs doing all this crazy shit but you know you never know and it's all that mental aspect of it you know all the shit that you're doing now it's like it's not stopping you and i think that's also a message to show these guys i think that are out there is i'm sure anybody you know i can only imagine you know obviously better than i can that you can prepare but i'm sure there's going to be anybody that goes through that there's going to be questions of can i really do this but that's where that mental workout basically is going to start to push and okay you know what fuck that look at all these other guys look at you which is why i wanted you on it's just like look at it you can really do anything it's not going to make a fucking difference Right. Back in, uh, so in, in 2012, I got my leg cut off December, 2011. I got my first leg early March, 2012. And as a sort of, a sort of motivator, my buddy signed me up for the Tough Mudder again. And so the Tough Mudder was in June already. And so what's that March? I've had, I had a leg for about three months. I couldn't even really walk a mile. And, you know, the Tough Mudder was creeping up on us. And I was like, man, are, are we really going to do the Tough Mudder? And we were sort of hemming and hawing about it. And then I just thought, I'm not, I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. <laughs> oh, that's a uh, severe weather warning. Sorry. <laughs> I can't control those ones. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, we were hemming and hawing about doing the Tough Mudder. And I just thought, man, I, I couldn't, I can't can't imagine me saying no I can't do something you know and so I showed up to the Tough Mudder with my leg on and I had my crutches on my back and uh, I ended up going about six miles on my leg and then I finished the like the last seven miles on crutches and when we crossed the finish line I was like that was probably the dumbest <laughs> most painful stupid idea ever but I'm glad we did it you know yeah so going into things that you can't you probably, you know, you think you can't do, or you definitely shouldn't be doing, but just accomplishing those things makes you feel, yeah, um, makes you feel so much better about yourself. And then, you know, that, you know, and, and then next challenge, next obstacle, nothing, nothing can stop you, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, it's funny that you say that because you hear a lot of guys sometimes of <coughs> it's, it's hard to say when to push and when not to push on something. Because if you're always on the, oh, well, you know what, let me stay on the safe side, you're never going to grow and really push your limits, and you're always going to kind of basically push out on things. Yeah. But you do want to push, and sometimes you're going to push too far. Like you see guys in the gym or things like that. It's like, you know what, they push, finished it. Maybe something happened or there was an injury in the gym. I've had it, things like that, whereas – if I didn't do it, I wouldn't know where my limit was, or you wouldn't have known. Like, yeah, like you said, it was one of the most painful things, but you still finished it. So you're like, yeah, it sucked, but you saw how much more your limit was than if you wouldn't have even pushed to do it. So it's kind of, 
it's hard when I hear people and they're like, well, when do you know when to push and when to not? It's like, you can't really. What do you mean not push? What is that? Is that a real <laughs> yeah, thing? <exactly>. You know? <laughs> just, just do it, you know? Like, I'm yeah. not going to, I'd feel bad if somebody did and they like totally hurt themselves, but it's, it's, it's like, it's hard to explain that to people of like, well, you can either hold yourself back or you can fucking go give it your all. And most likely something's not going to happen. Something might, but again, you're not going to know that right. that's what life's all about, you know, like pushing to that fucking limit yeah. and raising the bar again and again and again, and just keep pushing past it. And too many people live that mediocre average, not pushing at life. Like you say, you've seen these gyms, all this fancy shit and this and that. It's like, just fucking lift some weight and kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's sort of, I sort I have a, a funny effect. Not that I, you know, I'm in people's, I, so I'm, I have my leg and I don't, I'm not in people's faces about it, but they just, um, they feel awkward complaining about their minor sports injuries to me, you know, or, or some, sometimes people seem oblivious to the, uh, the context here and they'll, they'll complain to me about their sore foot or something like that. Like, Oh yeah, I had to stop working out for nine months because you know, I had <laughs> this, uh, the bottom of my foot was sore or I had a, <laughs> you know, a stress fracture or something like that. Or my shoulder hurt. I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I was like, I got a tore rotator cuff that, you know, that shit kills, but you know, you still gotta, gotta go after it. Um, so it's pretty funny. So it's, it's nice that I have that diffuser. My leg is sort of a complaint diffuser, you know, people, um, just sort of see me um, live in the life. And it, it's kind of that if, if he can do it, you know, maybe so can I. And so that's a nice, nice foot in the door for me when I start training people. Yeah, yeah, because it does. It's, you know, I'm always about trying to find people and things like that. Or when I find this, it's like, this pretty much like the excuses that I <laughs> You know, yeah. from over the years of training people, you know, and the excuses that you and I both have heard within the military is just kind of like, who comes up with this shit? But also within the gym, you're like, what? Like, really? Like, I, you know, I, I have people like, oh, you know, my side hurts a little when I run. And, you know, me partially being the coach. And then within the military, you know, like, no one gives a shit about your side ache. Like, yeah. you just keep running and it's going to go away <laughs> kind of a thing. And I tell them that, and they're like, oh, it hurts. And I'm like, so like, yeah I know, like oh i got a shin splint and <laughs> and you know yeah that's what when uh, uh matt and jared and then when we did that you might be a veteran if video they had all their skits and i said you know it'd be a good skit and that's what we came up with the uh the, the the one guy sitting on the couch and me and matt asking them every day if he wants to go to the gym just you know a, a different silly excuses every day and, and we've all heard them hundreds of times you know so we understand you know um yeah but hopefully you know be able to get some people into action here yeah yeah definitely i'm sure like it's like you said you can just walk into a gym and it's i think it'll pretty much anybody that sees us will be like oh, okay like i need to stop being a pussy like if they are like i even remember this last year when i was uh before i started back up with all this when i was uh I was in Kuwait at my last contracting get job and there was a guy, he was still active duty. He was actually, he wasn't a, a, a reserve. He was, I think it was fourth ID. So he's a, he was a regular active duty guy and he had a prosthetic leg too, but he was in the gym working hard. And it was like instantly when he was there, I swear to God, everybody started working harder. That was around him. They were like, stop sandbagging. Like they were like, okay, like, I need to work harder. One of my buddies the other day, um, a friend of mine, a kind of a mentor, I told him, I was like, oh, hey, remember that? I told him, you know, send him the Little Bird video. I was like, oh, you know, I got Derek on, you know, it's going to be great for the site. And he's like, yeah, I was at the gym this morning and he's down in San Diego. It's like, there was a guy, there were two guys there. And I think one had both of his legs at the knee gone and one only had one leg. And he was like, it was, it's like, it pretty much made everybody's excuses invalid. He's like, and everybody was working hard. Like he's like, that shit was awesome for him to see. He was like, it was fucking awesome. And he's working out. He's like, I wanted to work harder basically from just seeing it. Cause it, it puts that into perspective, just automatically seeing it like, okay, I need to quit fucking being a pussy. <laughs> right. And it, it's kind of funny from my end because 
it's normal for me. You know, my leg is no, I'm just me. It's nothing special. I'm just, I'm just in the, I'm in the gym to do my thing. Nothing special about it, you know, but I forget what I may look like to other people, you know? So, whereas I'm just kind of in there doing my thing, I don't even, sometimes I forget that people will be looking and maybe being inspired or maybe have a question or two on you know, why the, why the, why the muscular guy has a fake leg and things like that. Yeah. So, but there's definitely, there's a lot of amputees that are, that inspire the hell out of me too, uh, to keep me going. So. Yeah. I see a lot of like, anytime I see that shit, I'm like, it's crazy. You know, these, uh, oh man, you probably know, I, I just spaced out on the name, but the, it's like the warrior, some of those guys that do all like the tough mutters and wearing the mask and some of them are like triple and quadruple like amputees. Yeah. And, stuff. and I'm like, fuck, like I feel yeah. Believe, and now I and that puts me in that boat, you know. It's like, man, I'm a pussy, you know. <laughs> like even all of a sudden, you man, because I see these guys doing cool stuff. So I gotta, I gotta figure out what's next. I gotta do something next. I can't just sit around forever. I gotta do something cool too now. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just in that group of like, man, I'm a, I'm a bitch, you know. <laughs> so. I see that. I'm like, fuck. I need to go to the gym right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like. I could have just came home, home from the gym and see that and be like, I feel really lazy right now. I need to go. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got a, I got a buddy on Facebook who owns a couple CrossFit boxes. He's a, he's a above the knee amputee. And I think this guy's shoulder presses like 140 pound dumbbells. He's just this big, he, he's, he's a CrossFitter, but he's jacked and he's strong and he's an amputee. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so I got I got to get on that level. Yeah, yeah, and I think I've seen even. Um, I think it was a girl. I saw it. I think a few weeks ago. And I'm sure someone's gonna send me an email on who the hell it was because I forgot. But it was a girl that it was a girl or a guy, and they were doing like an actual powerlifting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. doing the powerlifting competition, yeah. and she had like. Only one, it was an above the knee amputation. And I'm like, yeah. shit. Like, I know, I, I think I've seen that. And she was doing the movements without her leg on. Yeah, There's yeah, great one, one, one leg. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, what the fuck? I've seen people that, complain yeah. about like, oh, I can't squat or I can't, but like, what? Yeah. Well, like, yeah. I've had a little bit of a hip issue and I've been working through some, some stuff <laughs> lately. And I'm like, I need to, you know, I see that and I'm like, okay, like, I'm just going to push through the pain as much as I can, you know, not be stupid about it, but it's like, I can't just say no because then I'm just a bitch about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I saw, I saw those videos of her doing those movements and I was like, yeah, I can't do that. Like wh why can't I do that? You know? And so I work on my single leg squats and things like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I wonder, um, see, I think I wonder, I've been playing around with new legs at the VA trying to get the problem. Uh, if you want to be a power lifter and an amputee, like I, you know, she wasn't wearing her leg. And so I was wondering what options there are, you know, is, is power lift, you know, amputee power lifting, is that even a sport or something like that? You know, and, and the problem is that the max, uh, the max load on these legs is about 250 pounds. And so if you, I keep, but I just, so I just keep breaking my leg. You know, like I bend the hydraulic shaft and all sorts of stuff because, you know, I'm 170, 180, but I'm deadlifting, you know, 350, 375. It's just, just destroys the leg. And so I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm waiting for the day where they have like an 800 pound max load leg where I can do some real deadlifts again and things like that. Yeah. Maybe uh, empty just power lifting. Eventually come out, come out with something. I was kind of wondering that too, like how, do you have, do you just wear the same leg or is there one, like if you do the tough mutter, or like say if you go run, is it, do you have something different? Cause I see, you know, these guys that do track, obviously that's a different thing with the ones that they have, but like, do you just have the same leg that you wear? I got, I have four legs now. I have my X2, which is the bionic leg. That's sort of my everyday leg. And then I actually have one of those running blades, oh. but I, yeah, I have a problem. The my my stump is really long and muscular and so it fluctuates in size with activity and so it shrinks you know and once the sweat comes out it shrinks and so my leg just goes flying off uh, and so I can't like that's kind of holding me back from running until they figure out a way to get the sweat drained out of there but then 
for the, uh, yeah, like for the Tough Mudder, if it's something I got to get dirty, I have a backup leg, which is, it's pretty basic. Like it's just swinging stands. The, the heel locks it and the toe <laughs> engages the knee. So if you're not uh, a well-trained amputee, you're going to fall quite a lot on, on one of those legs. But then I'm just, uh, actually tomorrow I'm getting a new leg and it was designed by a guy who rides snowmobiles. And he, he did, he, you know, he was in a snowmobile accident, lost his leg and he just up and creates his own leg, you know, in the shop. And now he sells them and it's really cool. It's got a couple like a hydraulic knee and hydraulic ankle. And so I wanted to see, I'm looking for something that'll help me in the gym for like squats, you know, cause these legs, I need something with an upward motion. Yeah. You know, or you come down. And on this leg, I just put it in free swing. So it's basically there just to balance, mm -hmm. but I need something that has some powering up and this might be able to do that, or it's at least something closer to what I'm doing now. Yeah. With yeah. the hydraulics, especially being in like the ankle area and stuff like that, it, get, yep. it gets, gives you a little bit different, more of like a, a natural movement of an actual like ankle and the knee joint and all that stuff there. So that'll, that'll be interesting to see how, how that works out. Yeah, it's just a, you know, I, I don't let it, it can be frustrating, you know, like I still can't do a lot of things I want to do, but I don't get frustrated about it anymore because I just kind of accept it, you know, and as time goes on, technology gets better and I, and I don't, uh, I don't rush myself with any kind of goals yeah. or gains when it comes to my leg because I just, you know, I'm always trying new things and, and always trying to get better and if I don't reach certain goals, then so be it, you know, like my life's a little different now. You know? Yeah. yeah, you're still in there, you're doing what you can, where a lot of people just be like, uh, you know, they'd be fat and lazy and coming out with excuses, but you're, you're just doing, which to me is like, that's better than not at all. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're in there, you're pushing, like say you're setting your goals. If it takes a while to get there or you have a goal, but maybe technology hasn't caught up enough to be able to do what you need to do to get that goal. You're not going to let it stop you. Just being patient, yeah. Perfect, perfect. All right, cool. Um, I think we got a lot in there. So unless there's anything that you want to add specifically, you know, to any veterans or anything out there, and also um, I'll get the links too, but, you know, drop all the stuff that you want where people can get a hold of you, find out about your foundation, the gym stuff that's going on, everything, you know, that we kind of talked about. Right, sure. So for the gym, it's sort of, we're waiting until September to make a, an official announcement because like I said, I got picked up by a pretty big name gym. And so we're trying to keep it in house until mm -hmm. a meeting. So the best, the, uh, if people wanted to stay in contact with me, just finding me on Facebook, I just run my own um, profile. And then this fall when the gym opens and I launched the uh, nonprofit, if people want to, you know, like they, if they want to stay tuned to what I'm, uh, what I'm up to, they just um, find me on Facebook. And then um, I don't I don't really have anything else to add. We we sort of hit off, talked about a lot of stuff here. You know, I cool. think the right. message came out. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, and I'll throw up the link to uh, your page so people can get a hold of you. And uh, if there's anything else that people need, you know, like we were saying, it's not alone. You know, reach out. You know, yeah. there's there's not just you know us. There's plenty of people out there. You know, so people aren't alone. You know. Yeah. He said, start searching for groups on Facebook, if anything. Just yeah. watch Matt Best videos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that would make anybody's day better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. my, still, my still favorite favorite thing is the, uh, the operator workout. Yeah. So we, uh, we got ideas for when my gym opens to bring the guys up here, and we got, we got a funny idea um, to, do, to do a video here. So that will be – something to look forward to I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of videos going on <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right perfect well uh, i appreciate you taking the time again derek and i know a lot of people are going to get some great you know stuff about this and i'll put it out there and put it in front you know try and get it in front of guys that need it you know that are in that spot like you said you were where they think they're alone or you know they need someone basically to tell them to fucking hey you know like don't go down that fucking road <laughs> Yeah. Perfect. Charlie Mike. Charlie <laughs> Mike. <No. laughs> I, 
I appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody, you guys got questions, um, shoot a comment, hit up Derek also on his Facebook. Uh, links are going to be below. Uh, anything you guys need, awesome. Stay tuned for more interviews. All right. Thanks.